What am I? I would say I was a butterfly. I'd fly and fly until it was my time to die. It's creeping in again. I know what I really am. I'm no more pretty purple piece. Alright, hello and welcome everybody to the first live stream of Dream Slayer Studios Marvel Galaxies. If you haven't been watching the series on YouTube, I'll give you a little bit of rundown uh, so we can get you caught up, but I would encourage you to seek out the Dream Slayer Studios channel on YouTube so you can see firsthand what has brought us to this point. We're only a few episodes in on Galaxies, so it won't take very long to catch up. But regardless, thank you all for joining us as we continue the tales of the Children of the Blind Father. And if you like what you see here tonight, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Uh, so I think before we get started, I'll probably go around the table here, or the virtual table, I guess, and introduce some of the players. Uh, so, uh, Fern, you're first on my screen if you want to introduce yourself real quick and who you're playing. Uh, sure thing. I am Fernando de la Cruz, and I am playing Griffin. It's a very short intro. I don't know how much you want to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's good enough for me, Mikey D. Uh, I am Mike DeWeese, and I am playing Lopes, L-O-P-Z. It's not Lops. It's Lopes. Um... <laughs> And uh, that's it. Stay tuned. <laughs> Marky Mark. Yeah, Mark's palm playing Jace, not Josh. <laughs> <laughs> so, and actually, Lopes is my grand papu. <laughs> and Griffin's your your daddy, right? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dana. I am Dana, and I'm playing Talia. And last but not least. I'm Christy, and I'm playing Usharia. No one ever mispronounces that. Never. Never. And then we have two uh, folks, unfortunately, that, that couldn't join us tonight. Andy uh, and Tony. Andy plays uh, Larry, and Tony plays Cla Clag. Uh, so neither one of them, unfortunately, could be with us tonight, but we're pressing on anyway. So to kind of give everybody a little bit of a rundown on what has happened thus far on Marvel Galaxies. So far, we've been following the exploits of the family known as the Children of the Blind Father. Having led a peaceful existence on the planet of New Haven as humble farmers, their world was turned on end by the sudden and violent tearing of their skies. A frightening rift opening up in space and time, spewing forth strange visitors from afar in search of the patriarch of their family, the pillar of the community known as the Blind Father. <clears throat> a giant being calling the shots from on high, the world devourer known as Galactus, 
sent his heralds down to New Haven to retrieve the blind father. The heralds tore a swath across the family farm, laying waste to the blind father's descendants. When the blind father emerged onto the scene, seeing his fallen family, his eyes sprang to life after years of dormancy, revealing a red flash, followed by a great bird of fire, a phoenix, who disintegrated the heralds and brought his family back from the brink of death. As the family gathered their wits about them, secrets were revealed about the blind father's past and a universe none of the family ever knew existed. A universe created by a god emperor known only as Doom. In an effort to save his family, very little else could be gleaned from the Blind Father as their world was crumbling around them, as the two cosmic entities, Galactus and the Phoenix, battled in the skies above. But. As they were boarding a mysterious spacecraft that had been hidden away for generations, they learned of a pair of elder siblings from the other universe, Rachel and Nathaniel Summers, and the world where the Blind Father once called home, a planet called Krakoa. Escaping their home planet and their universe, the family unfortunately found themselves crash-landed on a on an alien planet, quickly coming into a confrontation with the Children of the Green Hills, an inbred, green-skinned, cannibalistic tribe. Battling them back, they discovered someone had been watching them, a barbarian who introduced himself as Conan the Destroyer. Through Conan, the family now knows they are on the planet called Hyboria. And the ring of asteroids that encircle the planet are the remains of Krakoa. Conan knows of another man who fell from the stars. He is called Kazar and lives in the furthest southern reaches of Hyboria known as the Savage Land. So at this point the family and Conan have begun to make their way along the river Styx and have come to a small town called Ganatas, where they decided to catch some local entertainment, a traveling circus of delights. Unfortunately, an old saying from the Blind Father rang true this night, never trust the carny folk, and the family once again found themselves in battle, fighting not only for themselves, but for the well-being of the townsfolk. After the confrontation, the family have been hailed heroes and a great feast has been planned for the following day, led by the town leader, Thane Galen Blackthorn. So, that is pretty much where we left off there, folks. Um, so, you guys would have finished off your meal and drinks uh, at the little tavern that, uh, that you came upon called the Red Bull. Um, and at this point probably would have been heading towards the inn that Conan had kind of procured rooms for you all. Uh, and this is called the Silver Griffin. Um, the inn... Yeah, they named it after you. Hey, they did. <laughs> of, of course they did. They know of my exploits. <laughs> you, you are a griffin. This is a griffon. So it's a silver G R Y P H O N, uh, but you know semantics. Semantics. Um, but it's kind of a nice little neat and tidy uh, little inn that's just kind of a beacon of warmth uh, amidst this bustling city. Uh, when you go inside, you're greeted by kind of a cozy glow of flickering torches and candlelight and the comforting scent of hearth fires burning low. The common room has a few folks in there with a little bit of merry laughter kind of floating through uh, the hall. And uh, this is a bit of a welcome respite from the chaos uh, that you had just experienced out in the circus tent just outside the city walls. 
the innkeeper, uh, his name is Braun, B-R-A-H-N. He's kind of a stout, dark man uh, that approaches you all with a little twinkle in his eye. And he welcomes you uh, as you come in. Oi, I heard about you all from the, from the big one over there. You uh, sounds like you made quite an impression on Thane Blackthorn. Well, welcome to you all. Uh, I have rooms set aside for you. Uh, I have three rooms in all. I hope that uh, that will suffice. That will do. One room for me and my family can fight over the remaining two. Thank you. Excellent. Well, the, uh, right this way, then, if, 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 if you'll just follow me. Uh, and he walks you through the uh, kind of meeting area there uh, in the lobby, uh, and it branches off into about three different directions, uh, a couple of small little hallways that kind of go off into, uh, into three different directions there. Uh, the rooms themselves are pretty quaint, small, uh, a few of them have uh, two to three beds. Well, all of them have have two to three beds in them. Uh, and if you uh, if you want, you can kind of spread out and you know figure out who who's rooming with whom. Uh, but uh, I'll kind of leave that up to you guys. And if there's anything that you all want to discuss, if there's anything that we need to uh, to talk about, you know, if, uh, and maybe get us caught up, caught up, because it's been a couple of weeks since we met last, uh, we can certainly do that. I just kind of I pick the first available room and go flop down on a bottom bunk, and just kind of like <laughs> put my hands behind my head and close my eyes. Uh, I'll go into the next room. I'll sit in a corner and meditate. I'm going to try to use my cloak to sneak where I think Thalia is going to go and like hide in the shadows and try to surprise her. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty. So um, you should probably make... I forget what the cloak actually gives you. Does it give you, give you any advantages or anything there? Um... Oh yeah, items or no? I don't have. It's in there, yeah. Shadow cloak. Blend the shadows, becoming nearly invisible to light. Remarkable ability. Okay. Remarkable, yeah. So just roll on the uh, remarkable column there. And then uh, Thalia, uh, if you want to make a an intuition roll, he got a green with a forty nine. Intuition. Mm -hmm. Can I say karma? You certainly can. Karma. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my god. <laughs> yes, I was. Oh, uh, big fuck. That was amazing. <laughs> so one of the things about Are that you? that cloak, Jace, uh, is you, you do have to be pretty much in shadow uh, for that thing to work, and you really <laughs> feel like you you've gotten yourself in pretty good shadow. Because you can kind of see the cloak just kind of disappear, like from from your chest down, and you're like, "All right, perfect." But what you don't realize is there's a torch that is just casting enough light, like on your head area. So you're basically just kind of like this floating head and shoulder <laughs> as Thalia <laughs> walks by. <laughs> so Thalia, what do you do when you see that? Is he just like? Are you just like real still? Oh yeah, like, I think I'm like totally hiding. <laughs> I'm gonna I move really slowly. <laughs> I'm gonna walk by, and as I get right up to him, I'm gonna just look him like right in the eyeballs, and I think I'm gonna whack him upside the head. <laughs> I can see you, you little twerp. <laughs> you you want to make the attack? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Are right. you talking to uh, me or him? Yeah, no, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so make a uh, make a fighting roll. Plus martial arts, if you've got it. I don't know if you do or not. Uh, I have A and B. Okay, yeah. So I do uh, probably a martial arts uh, B. B, okay. Mm -hmm. 61 yellow to hit. Oh my gosh. 
Um, oh, so I'll try to dodge it, I guess. What's that? Is that agility or something yep. else? Yeah. Or do I use my martial arts though? Um, gives me a plus one. Gives you a plus one. Yeah, you can do that. Yeah. Or my acrobat says, I mean. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I don't really want to spend karma on this. I might need it for <laughs> fighting. <laughs> and I'm surprised because I thought I was totally hidden. Right. Yep. Totally, okay, that yeah. totally resulted. In... <laughs> and are you doing any damage to him or just, just hit no. him? No. Just to hit him. No, I'm just hitting him upside the head. Like, Jesus. <laughs> I was like, ow. <laughs> Man. <laughs> I'm still working on this thing. Didn't come up with any instructions. You have to hide better. <laughs> they will kill you if you don't. And I'll just walk. I'll walk away and just cloak like this. Go until next <laughs> time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, is there anything that any of you want to do before you uh, completely turn in? Uh, it sounds like uh, Lopes is uh, uh, already asleep yeah i'm old can i room with usharia of course yeah, i'll go in the same room grandpa poo <laughs> he's probably already in there snoring i don't know does he snore who snores <laughs> <laughs> as as jace passes me i'll put a hand on his shoulder and say you know if someone slaps you on the back while you've got that cloak like that with your head showing and nothing else, it'll stick like that. <laughs> I'm like, ha ha ha. Hmm. <laughs> go on, get some sleep. Okay. I think I'm gonna go in room Griffin's in if he doesn't mind. Because he's he's meditating. He's not gonna snore. <laughs> All right, well, you guys turn in for the night, get uh, get a good night's rest after a long day's travel and a, uh, and a quick battle to end the day. Uh, and wake up the next morning uh, and, uh, and begin your day. As you may recall, uh, Thane Blackthorn had uh, invited you all to a grand feast uh, at kind of the lunchtime hour uh, the following day. Um, and as you all are getting up and kind of getting your day started, you can kind of hear kind of a little bit of a hustle and bustle out on the streets there in Ganitas as uh, as people are beginning to set up for what, what seems to be a rather grand party uh, going on outside. Um, the, there's a town square, dusty. You know, this is kind of right, like on the outskirts of kind of the desert area where the where the kind of forest is kind of you know tapered off now into a little bit more of a sandy uh, kind of area. Uh, so the main circle uh, in the center of town is kind of where this is being set up, uh, just outside uh, the Silver Griffin. Um, but they're putting up long tables. They're putting up one large round table uh, kind of at the... It's almost like an exclamation point where they've got like a bunch of long tables lined up down the middle of the street and then one big dot uh, at the end uh, and setting up tables. They've got a couple of fire pits going out there and roasting uh, what seems to be some sort of like boar or something like that over a spit. Uh, so they are prepping up for a, for a pretty nice little party here today. Hmm. I'm not really one for pomp and circumstance. Can we just eat and leave? Is that is that can we, is that something we can do? I I believe the intention is for them to honor us, Griffin. So they can honor us with food, would be, and would then be we can leave. Room. It would be rude, I think. I, we, we should stick around for a while. You know, there'll, there'll probably be toasts and things like that. But this yeah. isn't helping we, us with our are. mission. Food will help us. Food is required, but we have we are here for a reason. Yes. Well, let's let's see how it goes. This seems ah. to be the way that they do things here, and we should respect their culture. Fine, but I'm finding the quietest corner. Well, as the midday sun 
casts a warm glow over the town of Ganatas. The festive atmosphere uh, begins to kind of brighten uh, and fills the air, permeating every corner of the bustling streets. The aroma of savory dishes wafts through the air, mingling with the sounds of laughter and merry chatter that echo uh, in the circle here at the center of town. They have uh, cast vibrant banners over top uh, of the streets, which are now kind of fluttering in the gentle breeze, and the long tables uh, are groaning under the weight of this extravagant feast that they've prepared for you. And it's laid out with an array of dishes fit for a king. Roasted meats, spiced vegetables, and hearty stews, uh, and... Uh, their scents are kind of drawing hungry gazes from all of those that are, that are passing by. At the center of it all is the uh, kind of circular table that is now adorned with rich tapestries and fragrant flowers. And uh, you are now kind of, people are coming to grab each and every one of you and start to bring you towards this circular uh, table. Uh, and Thane Galen Blackthorn arrives as you guys are being pulled to the table and he's uh, a tall man with extremely dark like ebony skin and kind of hair pulled back in dreadlocks and just a, a, a salt and pepper beard uh, and he walks over to the table welcomes you all uh, with hands outstretched uh, and he addresses the crowd. To our esteemed guests, he declares, raising his goblet high in the air, we owe a debt of gratitude that words alone cannot repay. May your courage inspire us all, and may this feast be but a small token of our appreciation for all that you have done. And now, before we begin our main course, ladies and gentlemen, I give you our town minstrel, Pierce, who has prepared a song for our guests. And this really interesting looking fellow <laughs> steps out of the crowd uh, and I'm going to pull this up so everybody else can see it here. Uh, very handsome man looks to be, it's hard to tell exactly what age he is, uh, but has kind of spiky blonde hair on the top, uh, and, uh, a little bit of a tattoo on the right arm, uh, and he carries a, a mandolin. Um, now if you guys... I don't know what your settings are uh, on your uh, sound settings, uh, but if you go to the playlist, I think there should be like a little music thing up in the upper right hand corner up there. Do you all see that? Mm -hmm. um, you might bring up the volume control uh, just a little bit uh, so that perhaps you can hear uh, what uh, Marx has sort of prepared for you, but was uh, is probably curious to know exactly what I've done with it. So yeah, I'm Mar interested now. Marx put together some lyrics for uh, for the song for you guys. So if you'll bear with me for just a second, I'll be right back. <laughs> Feel free to talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> nice. Jace thinks, you know, he looks as cool as that guy, a musician guy. <laughs> Nobody looks as cool as that guy. I'm sorry. Nobody does. <laughs> Ain't no one. That's awesome. <laughs> you love the same. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> now, unfortunately, I have a terrible cold. Uh, so I'm not going to actually sing this, but when I recorded this, 
uh, I found that it, this happened completely by circumstance, but when you hear the voice, you're going to see why I chose this particular singer to, uh, to represent this particular song. So, have you got your volumes uh, set and ready? Yeah. I mean, you say the foundry volumes or, right? I, or the... I, yeah, I think so. It, it should be like user volume controls, I think. Okay. Yep. Yep. I and your it. playlist. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I hope this works for everybody. But here you go. From the misty highlands past the Stygian sands came seven heroes bold from the Distant lands, Griffin led with a glare, his sword gleaming bright. Jace by his side with a cloak of night. Thalia with her bow so swift and keen. Fly silent, barely seen. Clack roars his battle cry, fierce and loud. Clearing their path through the daunted crowd. Oh, hail the heroes, brave and true. the sly Larry with crafts the bold one psychic eye all right and I think we'll call it there there's more to it than that there uh marks uh that was a very that, long that, song that'll be in the merch <laughs> merch uh store for everyone <laughs> amazing <laughs> I uh, I couldn't pass up dressing like old Stinger. Um, <laughs> I had to get some of my wife's jewelry for that one. <laughs> ten out of ten. I need that. I need that. Is it on Spotify yet? Uh, no, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> oh shoot! Well, that was fun. Oh. Never said I, I was. Uh, I was never afraid to make a fool out of myself. So, all right. So, um, you guys now kind of uh, uh, settle in and kind of let the crowd, you know, kind of celebrate uh, the actions that you uh, had performed in in saving the uh, the town from this thieving band of uh, carny folk, uh, and they start bringing out, you know all of these different dishes for you to eat and griffin there's you certainly get your wish you get your food uh and uh and really enjoy a hearty meal uh and about halfway through it's probably enough and you're about ready to pop um blackthorn is there with you guys uh and speaks with you as you as you dine uh, and at one point during the uh, conversation, uh, he he kind of leans in a little bit so that maybe some of the servants who are coming out to make the deliveries don't hear uh, what it is that he's saying. I, I trust your journey with Conan has been eventful thus far. I, uh, I cannot express enough gratitude for your valiant efforts in thwarting the nefarious Circus of Delights. Your bravery has not gone unnoticed, and for that the people of Ganatas are forever indebted to you. Where are you and your family off to in your journeys once you leave here? South. Just in a in the specific direction of south, you have no destination. 
Nothing particularly specific. Why do you ask? Well, it grieves me to say that we are, our town here of Genitas is plagued by a more pressing threat, more pressing than that of the thieves. One that strikes at the very heart of our existence. We are a simple people, hunters, gatherers, farmers, and the like. Not warriors or heroes like yourselves. Several of our townsfolk of late have gone missing, vanishing without a trace on their hunts and their gathering expeditions. All signs point towards the eastern reaches near the treacherous tar pits where strange and unnatural creatures have been sighted. And it embarrasses me to make a request so soon after already saving our community from those wretched criminals, but I humbly ask if you could, if I could possibly convince you to venture into the depths of the unknown and unravel the mystery that surrounds the tar pits. The fate of our missing kin hangs in the balance, and only the courage of souls such as yours could bring them back to us. In, in what direction would these tar pits be? Is it south? Uh, no good, sir. It is to the east. But we're going south. Perhaps uh, Mr. Blackthorn and the other residents here could offer us assistance on our journey in exchange for investigating the, the issues that they're having. Oh. Uh, Do you think that would be acceptable? Yes, absolutely. Traveling on foot is, is dangerous, as I am sure Conan has warned you. We would be happy to supply you with transportation. Um, we have camels and a pair of horses to aid you in your ongoing travels in exchange for your good deed. Uh, family, I, I, I say that we consider it. We don't even know what we're considering. We this we don't know what kind of dangers we're going to be walking into, but are we know that we need to go south? Nor do we know what dangers lie south. We, yeah, but we, we have we to go speed south. Up, we can speed up our journey by by taking a little detour here while doing some good for people not unlike ourselves. I want to help them. I'm going to take my cape, cape and jump up on a chair. Like, yeah, let's venture forth. Go on an adventure. Thank you, son. You want to venture south, correct? <laughs> I mean, we could zigzag, go go east and south. <laughs> Mr. Fine. We would be fine. Happy. And may I use cosmic awareness to discern the nature of the threat? Um, and I am trying to recall. Yes, yeah, you can. I just wanted to look at something there on your sheet to see what what all that would actually do. Yep, you can certainly do that. And you got a green thirty nine. You kind of reach out in the direction that uh, Blackthorn, you know, had, had kind of motioned. Uh, and a lot of what you see, I think, in these visions is, depending on, I think, the, the color of uh, what you roll, you know, you, you'll get certain flashes rather than, like, it being like a... You're, you're just looking directly down at something. Um, but you kind of hone in on the idea of the, these tar pits and creatures and so forth. And you do get um, a vision of black water surrounded by a cavern. Or a canyon, I guess I should probably say. Um... There are bones sticking up out of the black water. Um, and you hear what sounds to be like hoof prints 
uh, off in the distance. Uh, almost like that of a horse or something. Uh, and the slithering of snakes. Oh, you're muted. Oh, I am? Lopes. Oh, Lopes. Uh, I was going to ask if I could also roll um, empathy just to sort of check in on Blackthorn's emotions as kind of a lie detector intent to deceive detector kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, we can do that. Uh, karma. Whoa! Oh, got a 100 right off Yikes. the bat. That's pretty nice. Um, he is, he certainly seems to be genuine. Um, he's nervous and because of his hushed tone, that could be interpreted one of two ways. And it's, it could either be he's trying to hide something or he's ashamed. And what you are getting from him is more shame than anything that he doesn't want to look for outside help but your presence here seems to be fortuitous and he's taking advantage I think of a situation but maybe not necessarily taking advantage of you got it so he seems genuine in a nutshell all right Jace is going to look around for any uh, girls around my age and <laughs> is there any girls around my age um yeah there's uh there's some girls probably uh at one of the long tables <laughs> nearby yeah i'm gonna walk over the road dramatic in my cloak uh-huh go hey how's it going you may have heard about me and that song there yeah me and my family are getting ready to go on a big adventure you know you know i'm jace some people call me cloak man yeah how you doing <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm going to have you make a, the, one thing I've always hated about this is it doesn't really give you any kind of roles for like, you don't, you don't have a lot of social or, interaction or, or stuff. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I do um, have an acting performance skill actually. Mm -hmm. And so I could, I could do that. And that, is that cool. Uh, yeah. And that is, uh, Probably based off of what reason? Uh, I don't know. I don't remember. Performance remarkable. This is remarkable. No, not, not reason. It'd be uh, intuition, it looks like. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, I would roll that on remarkable. I, I probably shouldn't use karma for this. <laughs> nah, I probably shouldn't. It'll be I'm funnier if you don't. Yeah, I'm not going to. Hey, it's yellow. Hey, all right. <laughs> Um, you see these girls who are probably maybe close to your age, maybe just a little bit older. Um, they kind of look at you and then they kind of very, you say what you say and they quickly kind of turn their back and kind of huddle together and start whispering and giggle just a little bit, look over their shoulder and both of them are blushing, uh, a little bit. I'm going to look at, at my dad and be like, I really like it here. We can come back sometime. <laughs> it's time to leave. Everybody, get your things. We're going on an adventure, then we might as well start right now. Let's uh, go ahead. Let's pack up. Let's move on. We've got things to do. It's time to leave. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Oh, well, until next time, ladies. <laughs> Walk off. <laughs> um, and... One, one of the girls takes out a, a, a kerchief and she waves it in your general direction there. <laughs> no, seriously, it's time to... Dad, help me out here. It's time to leave. Let's go. Did we eat? Yeah, yeah, you ate. Yeah, oh, okay. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and I mean... It... I to, am I supposed to take the handkerchief? I don't know what. Yeah. <laughs> no, she just waves it at you. It's just oh, okay, a little wave. Yeah, if you try to take it from her, <laughs> she, she's going to snatch it back. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, the, uh, the dinner kind of starts to kind of uh, 
the, the, the folks kind of come in and start to kind of take some of the plates away and other members of the community begin to kind of kind of come up and crowd you guys and and begin to kind of, uh, you know, ask about your exploits and so forth. So you kind of have to dodge some questions here and there, you know, as uh, as people are kind of coming up to you. Uh, but um, Griffin, you've you've been kind of ushering people uh you know, in the direction of the east <laughs> to try to get you guys out of there, I assume. Um, so, what do you guys want to do? That You probably can kind of graciously kind of remove yourself from the crowd and kind of get back at least to the inn to kind of discuss if you need to and uh, gather up what you feel like you need to gather up and so forth. So I'll give you a moment here to kind of discuss the uh, the events that have just transpired. Um, do we know how how far away the the tar pits are, or, or wherever it is that we're we're headed? All he told you is is to the east. <clears throat> um, but I mean, sh surely you could probably ask around, you know, and maybe get a little bit more information. Um, yeah. Well, I guess when we get back to the end, I'll just I'll ask uh, Braun the innkeeper mm -hmm. um if if he what he could tell us about the tar pits and how far away they are and what he knows about them. sure yeah hey what can i help you with there mate uh i was wondering what you could tell us about uh the tar pits and east of here and and, and what's been what's been going on with with your people in that place mm. You've heard the stories of some of our hunters going missing, have you? Yeah, there there was conversation at the party. Well, it's been a fairly recent set of occurrences over the last several weeks. Some of our men and some of our women have gone out and gone missing. The, the men, the hunters, uh, one one by one, never in a group, but a, a single hunter gone. And uh, the women, few women too, that have been taken, they were taken together. Uh, they were gathers going out towards the edge of the forest that is close to the canyon. Um, the tar pits are about Mm. an hour outside of Ganatos, to the east. And it's where the sands begin to turn red. And you'll see the jagged rocks, brownish-orange, off in the distance, and the tar pits are located as the, as the rocks begin to crumble. You, you will see a path of red that leads down into the tar pits. Uh, if memory serves, I believe there's two ways in. One from the west and then another from the north. Is, would, would you say that one way is better than another? Is, is there one that w would allow us to have high ground and see, see what's going on? Mm -hmm. Most of us have stayed away from the tar pits. Uh, we believe it to be a haunted place. I traveled there when I was but a wee child. Um, but I seem to remember coming from from the west was an easier way to get in. Right. And are besides the dis recent disappearances, are there any other, you know, more specific legends or stories that mention any you know particular creatures or spirits or you know is, is there anything more specific around that legend well the tar pits are guarded by the visage of one of the old gods the goddess called freya what what was uh what was freya the goddess of mm, goddess of fertility 
And it is said that she mated with creatures near the tar pits, and uh, there are generations of bastardized creatures that uh, are part man and part beast that walk the grounds. I see. All right, so it takes about an hour to walk there, and you said coming in from the west would be the easier way. Yes, it's a bit more treacherous, if I remember correctly, from the north. <clears throat> and would probably tack on another half an hour to your journey. All right. Uh, thank you for your help. And I'd, I'd slap a little silver piece or, or whatever the local currency is on the bar there. Thank you. Thank you, good sir. And be careful on your journey. Thank you. And I, I'll go back to the group and, and relate that information. Oh, a little over an hour. That's fine. We can yeah, go and not, be back before well, bedtime. We, we may want to consider going in the morning. Just, you know, just, you know, get another night's sleep. You know, I had a couple of flagons of ale myself. I can't speak for anybody else, but you know, it might be best to go in clear headed. All this delay. You know, we don't wanna we don't wanna underestimate anything. You know. These this this may not be simple simple carnies trying to rip people off. This this sounds like it could be a little a little more serious. If it's a Black little more serious, all the creatures. reason to go now. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Forgive me. That's okay. Blackthorn spoke of creatures. And if there, if we take the time, we may find additional, um, additional weapons or um, clothing to protect us. Yeah, there may be maybe resources that we could gain from that. So yeah, I, we're supposed to be heroes. Oh, nope, sorry, I didn't hear sorry. it. I said, yeah, we're supposed to be heroes. Shouldn't they like you know arm us up? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think we're pretty armed up, you know, relative to the other people in the town. I don't think they're holding out on us. That's true. Uh, I, th I think a good night's sleep and an early start would, would behoove us. I feel right, I myself... Oh, guys, go ahead. I feel myself getting anxious, so I'm going to retreat to my room and meditate. <laughs> good idea, I'll go too. <laughs> 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 all right so plan is to get a get a little bit more rest maybe uh sleep off some of the uh some of the lunch uh that's my opinion I... oh you know i yeah what time willing to entertain it? a family meeting otherwise <laughs> I, actually what time is it I it's forgot what i would say at this point it's probably about two or three in the afternoon Ooh, okay, yeah, let's sleep, oh, I thought, let's I thought sleep it was, this all I thought off. it was later than that. Thought it was later than that? Yeah. It's a very it was, long it, song. It, 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 it was a luncheon, so, you know. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I guess I was thinking, like, starting. Yeah, never mind. <laughs> well, you guys could party maybe just, maybe a little bit a, longer. Maybe sure. just a nap. Yeah, maybe a nap. <laughs> Showing your age now, Grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> You kids go without me. <laughs> you just have fun and be careful. All right. All right. We can go. Let's let's go now. Let's you know. Never mind. I you know. Did nobody listens to me. I'm gonna grab my stuff. I'm gonna run down there because I want. Do we do we have cam camels in our world? This um, is about camels. He it, well, you probably don't have don't call them that and probably you have something similar uh and like those things that you raised uh on new haven were kind of a cross breed between like a like an ostrich and a lizard <laughs> kind of thing so i mean you had riding animals there uh but uh i mean if you you can easily spot you know what he, what he referred to as a camel and it looks like nothing that you've ever seen before, uh, for sure. You know, this uh, 
crazy beast with two humps on its back uh trying to figure out looking at it you know okay where exactly do you sit do you sit in between the humps do you sit on the hump where do where do you go (laughs) can i do an intuition see if i get it right (laughs) (laughs) sure (laughs) let's see hmm that's yeah, a lie. That... Okay, yeah. So <laughs> you 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 see a two humper, uh, and you and you are you going to try to actually mount this thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Okay. All right. Uh, so first off, make an agility feat. Oh, okay. Do I use my acrobatics? Uh, sure. Just yeah, you can do that. Yeah. All right. Oh, another oh white. God. That's good. Okay. So <laughs> <laughs> you leap up onto this thing uh and it takes you a couple tries actually just to even get up on it and then you end up in between the two humps and then you're just grabbing hold of one of the humps and and then you're just trying to like nudge it to try to get it to go uh and it it simply sits down and rolls (laughs) and you come tumbling off of it uh and have to make another agility feat Oh, uh, uh, to avoid from getting crushed by this thing. Ow! Is there a chance of damage? Do I need to do karma? There's a chance I, of damage on that. I better say karma then. Oh my oh, god! You got a one! <laughs> a one! Oh <laughs> no! Um, Lopes and Griffin, you guys hear from outside uh, the inn the muffled cries of, of Jace going, Oh, help! Help! It's laying on top of me. I get it off. Get it off. All right. Well, I'll run out there and see if I can't grab the, you know, grab the lead and try to get it to at least roll back over. <laughs> All right. Make uh, a same. Uh, make a reason feat plus one column shift. All right. Uh, Is he in the shadow of the camel wearing his cloak? <laughs> all right yeah so you kind of grab the reins a little bit and the bit that's in his mouth and kind of begin to kind of pull them and and he lumbers up and and spits uh and it kind of gets on your uh your uniform a little (laughs) bit (laughs) uh i checked jace and just check to see if he's injured I do have body armor. You've got body armor, so maybe, right? Yeah, yeah, so that would have soaked it anyway. But I'd be like, I'll just start getting up and go. Oh, thanks, Dad. I uh, <clears throat> that one's broken. I think <laughs> we should get a different one. <laughs> we look at his back. It's not healthy. <laughs> it hurts your pride more than anything. I think. Uh, perhaps we should consider walking, Jace. <laughs> Uh, walking it is. Uh, is there it's anything else we need before we need to depart? No, it's still early. I say we just go. Let's go. <laughs> All right. I'll throw my kick onward. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you guys begin to make your journey towards the eastern tar pits, um, and just as uh, Braun had said. Uh, it takes roughly about an hour for you guys to get out there. Um, it, the path that you guys are taking kind of runs you kind of alongside, uh, the Stygian forest that you had, uh, had recently kind of come out of, uh, into this little bit more like deserty plain type area. Um, and you can kind of see, you know, they, they, he had mentioned something about that you know, some of the women would come out into this area and, and gather. And you see some, some bushes that have like berries and whatnot on them. So this seems like this would have been the area that the women perhaps might have been uh, taken from. Further on up the road, uh, you see what he had described, which is the sand beginning to kind of turn this kind of reddish color. Uh, and it shifts from the desert surroundings of Ganatos to kind of a rugged, uh, rugged and rocky canyon uh, with brown stone walls, jagged, uh, and the red clay soil kind of glistening in the, in the light of the sun. The air itself is kind of thick with 
the scent of earth and uh, there's kind of a palpable sense of foreboding uh, in the air as you arrive. Um, as you guys kind of edge your way into the canyon, uh, there is a bit of an, a strange sight that kind of greets you as you approach. You, you can smell the tar uh, first off, as you guys are kind of coming down this kind of narrow passageway. Uh, and steam is kind of rising from the depths uh, that kind of puts a shroud over uh, the entire area as you guys arrive. You still see okay. Um, but there is a giant ancient fertility statue uh, that is at the entrance of the uh, of the tar pits kind of weathered and worn by the passage of time uh, there are bushes and palm trees kind of around the area uh, which are just kind of clinging to life in the harsh terrain and along the edges of the pits as I had mentioned to Usharia there's scattered bones of trapped animals, uh, which kind of serve as a grim reminder to the perils that lurk below. And far off in the distance, kind of in the middle of the tar pits, you can kind of see a, uh, a rotting carcass of a mammoth trapped in one of the smaller pits. Uh, and uh, the tar pits kind of end at what looks to be like a little bit of a cave at the far, far end. Uh, you can see, as you guys are coming in, some movement. Um, and there are three figures that kind of catch your eye uh, amidst the swirling mist. All right, up in the kind of northern area, up in here, uh, you spot what can only really be described as like a centaur. The upper body uh, of a man, uh, lower body of a white horse. Uh, and he seems to be kind of walking the parameter uh, of the tar pits. Uh, and he carries a large sword on him. Uh, in the middle of the tar pits right here, he almost looks like a statue. This right here is the uh, fertility statue of Freya that I was kind of describing right there. Uh, but off in this area here, looks like a statue. He's basically about the same color of the rocks that are around him. And, but then you see him move ever so slightly. Uh, and it's just this big hulking golem. Gronk. And then just beyond him, back in this area right here, is a strange kind of crab looking creature uh, that kind of scuttles about uh, these little platforms that kind of stretch back off into this little cave entrance that goes back in here. And you can kind of see there's like a bluish green kind of mist that's kind of flowing out of the cave. Is the fertility statue age appropriate for a young teenager? <laughs> <laughs> um, probably not. <laughs> she she got some big knockers. I'll be doing those stairs. <laughs> <clears throat> so what should we do? I'm guessing those aren't good guys, right? How, how are we to know? Well, I would know. ask. Have, have they... Does it look like they've seen us? Can they... At this point, for the distance that you're at, and, I, and I, we don't have a whole lot of room here on this map, so you would probably be further back from where you are right now, just kind of looking down on this, maybe from a little bit of a higher vantage point. At this point, as far as you know, it doesn't seem like they have noticed you. Now, the <laughs> this guy here, Stalior, uh, is kind of moving about this kind of northern area up here, and he seems to be looking down that pathway. Uh, but at one point, then he begins to kind of walk 
in that direction of the uh, of the entrance closer to where the statue happens to be. Mm-hmm. So he's coming towards us, but not like for us. Right. Yeah, it doesn't seem to be. I would like to start moving in that direction, basically in a on a path where Stallier will see me. Where he will see you? Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, um, so if you go where you just put yourself right there, he will stop uh, just beyond where that tree uh, is right there. And he pulls his sword and he says, Stop! Who goes there? You stop! Who goes there to you? You are trespassing. You do not belong here. Go on. Off with you now. Wait, I have a question first. What is your question? Mm. Are you, by any chance, stealing people from a nearby village? Making people go missing? What's it to you? Uh, curious minds would like to know. Mm. That's it. I've had enough of you. Go. I don't have to answer your questions. Look. We can do this through civil discourse. Or we can do this through uncivil discourse. I don't know what that means. Get. Gronk! And the, the... I, uh, I, I wave to my family, <laughs> and uh, I'm going to go ahead and use uh, uh, the lion's roar. Mm-hmm. And I'm just going to turn to them, and I'm going to shout, The Valiant Never Taste Death! <laughs> All right, what are you going to do? I I think that calls for a, a uh, an initiative role for everybody, but uh, uh, s- since you are calling everyone to arms, I'll give you first crack. Uh, well, I'm assuming I need to roll something for that. For what I just oh, with the uh, with the lion's roar, yeah. 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 Um, that is, I, have a, I believe, is remarkable. Yep, remarkable. Okay, um, and let's see. Oh, you didn't. That was. Uh, oops. Uh, I'll call karma on that. Okay. Oh, good. <laughs> a one is a one, so you can spend your ten. <laughs> How have we done two uh, ones this? Uh... <laughs> we are related. <laughs> <laughs> I'm never using this thing again. <laughs> uh, and then everybody else up top, if you guys would uh, just uh, make your initiative rolls there so we can get that going. All right, so, uh, Griffin, you shouted out in your li- what you thought was your lion's roar, but was basically you just yelling <laughs> at the top of your voice. <laughs> Uh, and, uh, Stallior, uh, now rears back on his, uh, on his back hind legs, uh, draws his sword and is now kind of marching quickly in your direction. Uh, and as luck would have it on a, uh, good roll here, um, Flag actually gets to go first. Um... And I'm just going to be making one action for uh, each of these guys. Um, He is going to do his hyper leaping uh, and bound into uh, Stallion. (laughs) Oh, and he got a white and missed. So he bounds off the rock back behind him. uh, And we go to Usharia. I'm going to hold my action okay. for the moment. All right, just remind me. 
Uh, Thalia. Oh, you're muted. Can I use my action to help flag? Or oh. is it too late? Um, you could potentially redirect him. Then I will do that. Okay. <laughs> uh, so Just roll your uh, uh, kinetic. Okay, the... hey, karma. <laughs> All right, so green. Uh, so that can change that to a hit. Uh, it's not going to cause... It, it'll cause him some damage, but... Okay. You got a 33 to hit. Yeah, that'll hit. So just spend my 10. I don't need to move it up. Oh, uh, you did call karma? I did. Oh, yeah, you can if you want to. You can get it up to the uh, the next color, which would take you to... It, it'd be 71 to get it up to the next color. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Hold on. You're on the incredible. I thought it was next. Yeah. My bad. It's uh, 61. 61. Mm -hmm. I needed to get it to 61. Yeah. All right. Sure. Why not? <clears throat> All righty. So, Flag makes his leap uh, and comes around, misses Stalior, but with your kinetic control, you weave it back around and it hits him right in his back. Uh, and Flag <laughs> ends up. Straddling <laughs> Stalior, uh, and, and is actually on his back now. Uh, I can't be. Now you've got, uh, got one extra action. One extra action, right? So you can go ahead and make that now. Oh boy. Um, can I? I don't know what to do. Um, I guess I'm going to shoot at him. Um, but I think, can I aim for his legs? Is he like super big? How he's big pre he? he's pretty big. Like yeah, I mean he's he's horse man sized. <laughs> horse man sized. Yeah. As, as, you know. I mean like Clydesdale quarter horse. Like what are we talking? <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably Clydesdale. So yeah, I mean he, oh, he's, he's 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 a big boy. Yeah. Okay. Um. <clears throat> I'm gonna. Sh I'm just gonna shoot at him, and I'm going to um, direct it to his chest. I guess. Mm -hmm. Kinetic control again. You uh, you're shooting the arrow, right? Yep. Um, I would do telekinesis. Telekinesis. On that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The same incredible. Well, no, 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 no. Look at your longbow down there under I equipment. So you've got a plus one column shift anytime amazing. you use that. So it would be okay, amazing. Okay, remarkable with limit. Amazing if using telekinesis to hit remarkable without. Okay. Right. Backwards. Amazing. Karma. All right. And then that is a. 48, he's not dodging, he's evading, so you hit with that, okay. uh, and then with the, did you spark it? I did not spark it, okay. because my dad's sitting there, but I directed it. Got it, okay, so that would be remarkable damage then. And I can just spend my 10 yep. on that mm -hmm. to hit. All right, so you hit him. Uh, he's pulled his sword, and now he's got Clag on his back. <laughs> uh, and he kind of turns a little bit to, to see who that is, and you hit him right in the kind of back of his shoulder uh, okay. as he's turning around. All right. Uh, so now we go to uh, Griffin. Um, I... I don't know if I can do this. Um, I would like to uh, separate myself from my ankles and float up into the air. Um, and by doing so, what I would like to do is observe Kronk. Um, and in this case, what I'm doing is trying to use my uh, martial arts D, meditative martial arts, 
to observe Gronk for a couple of rounds. So I don't know how hard it is going to be to hit this dude, but he seems hard to hit. Gotcha. Okay. All right. So. I mean, I, I like. I guess. Sorry, hold on. Before, before I, mm -hmm. before I commit to this line, you know, it's to affect, it's to it negate the effects of body armor. It, like in this case, just by the fact that he's like stone, is not really body armor, right? So this is kind of like a fruitless thing that I'm like endeavoring anyway. No, no, I don't think so. No, I okay. mean, you're you're seeing that he is an armored, essentially okay. an armored thing. Uh, so with that particular power, it would, it would basically allow you to kind of punch through that and get, and get to the core of whatever he happens to be. Okay. Then yes, this is the direction that I want to go in. Okay. All right, cool. All right. So you're going to spin the round and you have to do that for two rounds, two right? Rounds. Okay. Two rounds. So I kind of like want to like float, like if like somewhere somewhere up here, I just want to like float up in the air and just observe. Okay, got it. Uh, Jace. So I'm gonna take that gun that Larry made me mm -hmm. and try to snipe the horseman. <laughs> That's done setting. I can't remember. I guess I don't have it written down on my sheet, but. Was it was it incredible the blast? Do you remember? Or was um, it? I did not thought we had that on your sheet, but maybe maybe we didn't. This war too, but I don't see it anywhere. Huh. Yeah. No. Sorry, I thought it was on there. And you know, I might have lost it in the in the trans <laughs> transfer between the old computer and and this one. It's possible. Uh. So, but I believe that. Um. I was thinking that it actually did amazing. Oh, I'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> um, I could remember. Oh, okay, so I'm gonna try to shoot, shoot him. And, and did I remember correctly because I got red. I get three attacks. Is that right? Uh, so just... You do. Yes. Okay. So I'm just gonna be like ah, pew, 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 pew. <laughs> try to shoot him. Um, so is that agility? Is that correct? That would be agility. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, it's my greatest stat. <laughs> and you are going uh, after Gronk, right? No, Gronk. no, no. I'm going to go with st the horse dude. Okay, so Stallion. All right. Yeah. I think, yeah. I don't know if I'm I'm, I'm not sure if I want to mess with Gronk yet. Okay. <laughs> I don't want to take my father's glory away from him. <laughs> it looks like he's going to fight him. Uh, let me try it. Let me just go ahead and shoot a couple of shots first and see what happens. Um, I'm going to try one without Karma first. All right. Ah, I got a green. Is that, that that hit, or does he have dodge? It, it is a hit, yeah. All right, and he just automatically takes amazing, or uh, everyone's yeah. armor and stuff? Yeah, he does. Is he down? Uh, he might be. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, you hit him dead center in the chest uh, with that blast, uh, and he rears back backwards throwing clag off of him uh i'm gonna roll uh, in a, a quick agility here for uh for clag oh nope 29 i feel bad uh, for him i remember the camel but fortunately <laughs> uh he doesn't go into the tar <laughs> um and stallier goes down can i swing my cannon around and shoot a gronk then with my remaining attacks sure we'll see how tough he is here in a second right so right if if i hit <laughs> Let me try one without karma first. No, that's bad. Let me try one with karma. How much do I need to get a right, green so, there? So uh, on the good table to get you to green, you got to get a forty-six. Oh, just five more points. Mm -hmm. So I bet you got to spend ten. Okay, I'll do that. And that's a fifty-pointer, right? Um, you said amazing. You said yeah, amazing's fifty. That yeah. Does it look like it did anything to him? Or uh, it, it, off? He, it hit him and ma made him stumble just a little bit. Didn't send him off into the into the tar, but yeah, uh, he, he, he might have knocked a little couple of chunks <laughs> off him. I mean, like I softened him up for you, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> right, that's uh, it. Lopes. 
Um, <clears throat> I would like to send my uh, energy doppelganger uh, to Gronk, actually to like between Gronk and the shrimp looking guy. Um, and have it um, fire a, a plasma blast uh, first at Gronk. Good. And then, and then the shrimpy guy. All right. Uh, so I'll go ahead and call Karma for that first one. All right. So a green. And that's to Gronk first, right? Right. All right. How much damage does that? Oh, and you said Karma. So fifty-three on the incredible. Got to get that up to a 61, so 10 points will get you to a yellow. Okay. And how much damage does that do? Uh, Just incredible. Incredible? Okay. And that was with what power? Sorry. Uh, With the plasma generation. Okay. All right, so you hit him from behind. He, he was not expecting that at all, so he, he did not dodge. Uh, you hit him. It doesn't look like it did anything. Okay. Uh, so I've got two actions left. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to take one other shot at Gronk, um, kind of focusing more towards, um, like, his head or his face if he turns around. Mm-hmm. You know, less to damage and more to, like, throw off balance or disorient, you sure. know? Um, so I'll do that. All right, you got to get a yellow uh, for a called shot. Okay. Um, I will call Karma again then. Yeah. All right. <laughs> you can get it up to green uh, if you okay. want. Uh, so it'll still hit, but just not where you want it to. Sure. And 40 points damage again? Yeah. Okay. All right. So you hit... It glances off of his stone body, but uh, doesn't seem to have affected him. Okay. And then for my last action, I'll do that same thing um, towards the crustacean guy. Okay. And this is you, not uh, Zipol, this is, correct? Well, this is this is me. As Zipol? As Zipol, yeah. It. Okay. Got it. Uh, one last karma. Why not? green to hit on that and then again maybe you got to get that up to a 61 so your 10 will do it okay and 40 points damage there right yes all right so you hit him uh and it kind of backs him up a step or two it looks like that did affect him uh ever so slightly okay and then just for, for, for whatever it's worth, I'll have uh, Zipol just kind of act on his own accord as long as he lasts now. Okay, got it. All right, so it actually goes to the crab dude, the pursuer, uh, next. Uh, and he is going to retaliate um, and come at you with his pinchers. Adds a pole, anyway. Mm -hmm. Got a 70 uh, to hit there, uh, which that does uh, 20 points of damage. And Larry is going to come up under this tree over here and get on this rock next to the, uh, the tar pit right in this area right in here. Um, and he is going to reach down towards the tar, and he actually just barely touches his finger in the tar, and he is going to build a platform that stretches, uh, from, let me see if I can draw this out, I don't know if I can do this or not, a little free form here, drawing table, there we go, that's what we need. There we go. Can you guys see that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So he solidifies 
uh, that area leading from that rock over to roughly where Gronk is. Uh, and it basically just looks like kind of a, a sheet of like silver uh, that goes from where he is uh, over to Gronk. And he's going to take some damage from that. Actually, I didn't heal him up from the last time, so... He takes about 20 points of damage there. And now it's Gronk's turn. Uh, Gronk... Realizes that he's been hit from behind. And he crosses back over this bridge. And then leaps over towards... Um, the pole and is going to try to smash the pole. And he gets a white uh, and misses. I'm going to make him roll an agility feat. He got an 86. He doesn't fall into the tar pit, uh, but he comes off a close. Uh, Usharia, uh, it is your turn because you held. Is there anything that you want to do? Yeah, I think I would like to try to use the Ringmaster's Hypno Disc mm -hmm. on Gronk. All right, so you have to be in his line of sight. Okay. Let's see, how far can I move? I about 15 squares. Will this do it? Or should I get to the bridge? Uh, let's see here. So it would be one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Is you could get to about right there, right behind Larry. All right. And from there, I can see Gronk. You can see him, but he has his back to you. Okay. Oi, Gronk! <laughs> <laughs> How'd you know his name? <laughs> Don't uh, ask. St Stallier mentioned it. Stallier was all like, oh, He did. He did Gronk. say Gronk. Oh, that's yeah. right. That's right. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> At the sound of his name, he turns to you. <laughs> oh, great. Okay. And... So, karma. Okay. And what are you trying to do? I am trying to convince him that we are his only help. He wants to help us, to help himself, and he would love to just lay down arms. He feels so heavy, and he would like to unburden himself. Okay. I don't think he has any chance of... Oh, he might! He might! I did say karma. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay, you did. So you want to get it up to a red then, right? So. I would like to. Uh, 76, uh, on the monstrous table. You gotta get it up to 86, so just spin 10, that'll get you up there. Okay. The original 10 or 20? Uh, just 10. Yeah, the okay. original 10 will do it. Yeah. Alright, so Gronk looks, you say what you say, and he goes, oh, mm -hmm. <laughs> And he gets down on his knees and puts his hands out in front of him. Uh, and is just kind of resting there, looking in your general direction. Uh, and it seems as though you may have quieted the beast. Now, it comes back around to Clag at the top of the, uh, the next round here. Um, and Clag leaps up onto the rocks right up in this area right here. Just to kind of get a good view of Zapole and uh, Gronk and the Pursuer uh, over there. And he just kind of crouches and sits almost like a gargoyle 
on the edge there and is just kind of musing and with a little smirk on his face, just kind of waiting to see what happens. So he's going to hold his action for right now. Uh, Ushari, it comes back to you at the top of this round. <laughs> I'm going to go back to um, holding my action, I think. Okay, all right. Um, I'm going to have you make an intuition roll for me. Okay, cool. <laughs> huh? Cool. Huh? Um, <laughs> as Clag uh, is kind of just watching the show, uh, all of a sudden, from out of the reeds, the little bamboo reeds up in this area, up in here, uh, you see a giant serpent come out and try to clamp down. Uh, on flag. I got a 69 to hit. 69 doesn't count for you. <laughs> uh, but it is a yellow. Uh, so uh, he does actually make contact um, and does a little bit of damage to Clag. Uh, I think Clag can soak some of that. Yes, he can. So he's gonna soak all of it um, and store it uh, for right now. But Coyote then begins to kind of coil around him, uh, kind of entrapping him. Um, so Thalia it comes to you. Do I see that? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna. Can I get a little close? I don't know if I need to get closer. I'm going to shoot it with a sparked arrow and I'm going to direct it to the snake. And that is the longbow. Yep. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I've lost it again. There it is. Um, and what I don't have to roll for the spark. It's already sparked if right. I'm holding it. Mm -hmm. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> unless, there was a, <laughs> unless there was a lag there. I think I heard that, Karma, go <laughs> right before. <laughs> as right as I clicked the button. 85 is pretty freaking good. That is pretty good. Uh, so that is definitely hit. And with the spark... And the TK, it does mm -hmm. monstrous, right? Uh, that is a good question. Uh, Spark says remarkable damage. I'm sorry, I don't know where no, that that's is. That's all right. It's under your, your longbow. Uh, so it's under the longbow. Okay. Just... Looks like 70 points of damage. There it is. Monstrous, monstrous damage with TK total of 70 points. Mm -hmm. Amazing damage with Spark. Monstrous with TK at it. So, cool. Yes. All right. Yeah, Sorry. you took a big chunk out of him, and the uh, serpent that is now entwined around your father is on fire. Now on fire. Should he letting go though? He's not letting huh? go. No, not, letting not go? yet. No. Fuck. <laughs> cool. Uh, and you've got uh, another action. Um. Can I can I use telekinesis to try to remove it from my father? <laughs> I don't know. I don't think I've done that. Before. No, you haven't. Um, I mean, you're you're essentially attempting to grapple something with that from a distance. From a distance, yeah. Yeah. Um, and to my knowledge, you haven't tried to affect living material. Uh, with your telekinesis. So, oh, I don't think I have. Yeah. So, I mean, you can call a power stunt if you want. Okay. Well, how would I do that? Uh, you say you, you have already stunt. told me what you <laughs> wanted to do. So, yes. uh, then you spend 100 karma points to attempt it. You call okay. karma uh, because you need a red for your first uh, attempt at it. Uh, so. All right. You have to at least get a yellow and bump it up to yeah. a red uh, for it to succeed. And spend a hundred. 
minimum a hundred or just a hundred? Well, you you spend a hundred and then yeah. you spend whatever it takes to get you up to a red from a yellow if if you get a yellow. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? Let's do that. Now I'm rolling under telekinesis, or am I rolling under fighting? That would be telekinesis. Yeah. Okay. Karma. Oh. Pudge. Yeah. Okay. So you can spin. <laughs> you can spin ten okay. because because you're not going to be able to succeed with that roll. Okay. Uh, but you still have to spend the 100 karma for the attempt. Uh -huh. Of course. All right. So you reach out and you can kind of feel through the telekinesis. You can kind of almost feel the scales of the mm -hmm. uh, of the coyote. So, I mean, like, it's kind of like your radar sense is kind of pinging it as well. So, I mean, your okay. radar sense is really kind of connected to your telekinesis anyway. So now you're actually sending almost your sense of touch out with it. So you can actually kind of feel it. So you know if you try it a little bit harder, next time you might be able to make that happen. But okay. the way power stunts work... <laughs> Because yep. you may only try that once per, in a 24-hour period. Okay. Uh, so it will not work again for you today. Got it. Uh, but Sorry, Dad. After a rest, perhaps you might be able to. Cool. On on next attempt, mm -hmm. uh, even though it was not successful on this one, would you still need to get a red in order to, for it to be still, first successful? Still has to be a red, yeah. Okay, okay, for good. the first successful one. Then it gets easier to get a yellow the next time, then a green, then after that it's part of your power set. And Griffin, it is your turn now. Um, do I need to spend up... Uh, so I think I got two actions, right? So I think, do I need to spend both of my actions meditating on Gronk? Even though I know Gronk is kind of like in a in a controlled state at the moment, do I need to spend both actions doing that? Um, no, I don't think so. Okay. Then, uh, I may, uh, swoop in and take a, like, you know, since I'm floating in the air, basically, I just want to, like, you know, like, fly in and just, pa to smack this, uh, coyote. Uh, and... Then we'll see. We'll see if I can continue what I was doing before. After that. Okay. So that's going to be an endurance roll because that'll, that'll be a charge. All right. Sounds good. Uh, an endurance roll, Karma. All right. Fifty-four is a hit. <clears throat> and the damage on that. One, two, three. It's a plus three column shift. Oh. Uh, so that's going to be 150 damage to him. <laughs> Which I think is probably going to take him out. <laughs> um, we're going to roll an endurance. You want to move yourself over there? Yeah, as soon as I like, you know, move off of... All right, so you hit uh, Coyote, uh, knock him off of Quag, uh, and his burning <laughs> body just kind of slumps off of uh, off of Quag and kind of spills down the rock and into uh, the bamboo there, and probably catching a little bit of bamboo on fire there as well. I was hoping it would fall into the tar pit. Yeah. Catch it, all, yeah. catch it all on oh, fire. Oh, catch all of it on fire? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You guys didn't see that? <laughs> um, for my other action, I would like to basically do what I was doing before, which is like I don't I don't know how long Gronk's gonna be under control, so I would just like to go back to being floating in midair and you know observing Gronk and, and focus meditating. on him. Okay, sure. Yep. yep. All right, Jace. How far can I move in one turn? Uh. 15 squares, so when you're using the measuring tape, it's 70. So if I move over, let's say to here, can I get a shot at Pursuer? Can you see my... Yeah, I mean, it'll be tough, but yeah, you might be able to. Might hit full. 
I mean, you know. I mean, it wouldn't make any difference if it was over on the platform, right? That'd be probably harder. Yeah. Um, yeah, for sure. All right, let me just move over. Oops. <coughs> and I'll try to do a shot at stun. And I'm going to try. I'm feeling lucky. I'm going to try the first one without any um, karma. Okay. Yep. I mean, it was, oh, it was kind of I mean, something. <laughs> Um, and I'll try one more without, without karma. Oh, there Ooh, we go. There, there we go. go. That's right. my luck. 94 yellow, so that's a hit. And you are attempting a stun with that one, correct? Yep, yep. Cloakman never chills. Oh, okay. So he is stunned for one round. <laughs> All right. I, I, I tried to... Well, he's, he's down, right? So mm -hmm. I guess that's my turn then. Okay. Uh, Lopes. Um, so pursuer is stunned. Does, does that mean he's just like laid out on the ground, or is he just like dazed, or what's that? Uh, yeah, he he would have come down to the ground. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, is and, and he's close to the tar pit itself. Close to the edge. Yeah. Yeah. It's just right there um, on the edge. So, could I have the pole just like? push him in. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Yeah. You, you're really good at pushing people into crevices. <laughs> hey, you know. <laughs> if I remember correctly. <laughs> yeah. Um, so would I just roll the I mean, double it's, roll for better? It's He's, really a, uh, a fighting feat. Uh, but at a p probably plus three column shift because he's not going to be dodging for sure. Okay, so should I just roll energy doppelganger roll plus three cons? Um, you no, know, it, it, can you pull up his care sheets of pulse? Um, I don't remember where that... Oh, I guess I can click on him, can't yeah, I? Yeah, yeah, double Sorry, click on him. My, uh, yeah, so it would be his fighting plus three? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, so... That'll make it unearthly. <laughs> uh... <laughs> <laughs> you really needed that nap yeah <laughs> um wow. so you kind of reach over to him loose or lopes mm -hmm. or zapole loses his balance and topples <laughs> over top of him and ends up in the drink himself so would that plasma catch that on fire yes it certainly would all right <laughs> Uh, and it basically, the entire tar pit just woof, just lights up in flames. Uh, and uh, it's it's an incredible amount of heat that is coming at everybody. So anybody that is like on the edge of it, which is roughly everybody except for Thalia. Yeah, except for Thalia and, and from the look of it, maybe Lopes. Uh, is going to have to make an agility feat. Would my um, being like up in the air at all? Would that like? Oh yeah, you're up in the air. I forgot. I forgot okay. you were up there. Yeah. Okay. Sweet. Uh, but yeah, everybody else going to have to have to make an agility. Flag's okay. Karma. You're okay, Usaria. Larry's okay. Uh, Jace would need to roll. Uh, acrobatics, right? Yep. So, uh, mm -hmm. I guess, uh, uh, yeah. There we go. Yeah, you're okay, too. So, nobody takes any extra damage from the fire. <laughs> but now it's become extremely difficult to see uh, in this area uh, with all of the flames now that are that are covering the area. When that light's on fire, like the bushes that are around this area here also then begin to, uh, to catch a flame... Uh, and a figure jumps out of the bushes at Jace, <laughs> slightly on fire itself, and it is a small, um, like, lizard-like creature, uh, mostly humanoid in shape, uh, but it has this kind of weird, like, 
uh, like tendril that's kind of like wrapped around its body, yellow, uh, it, but uh, everything else is kind of green scaly uh, looking. He comes jumping out of the bush at Jace uh, and attempts to grapple uh, Jace. Got a 13. So he misses, goes over top of you, ends up a little bit behind. I use my cloak when he goes past it like a like a bull and <laughs> <laughs> <Ole. Ha! laughs> um and pursuer is still stunned it's larry I'm, I'm gonna mock him too what's that yellow thing you got did you keep your umbilical cord for for uh <laughs> for comfort or something <laughs> larry what's larry gonna do I don't know what I can do. Uh, while I'm trying to figure out Larry, uh, uh, actually Gronk would be next, so I'm probably, well, he's... Let's go to Usharia. Usharia, what do you, uh, what do you want to do? You're still holding an action at this point. Um, I'm going to continue to use the, um, Ringmaster's disc. Mm -hmm. And convince Gronk that he sees me approaching him across that bridge. Yeah, all of that's on fire. <laughs> no, he's, he thinks he sees me. Oh, okay, thinks he sees me. I'm not me. on okay. that. All right. But he sees me in the mist over the tar pits and still thinking I'm a friend and he needs to come. Come to you? Yeah. Okay. A little siren. All right. Um, so he begins to lumber through the flames uh, and gets on the makeshift kind of bridge uh, and begins to make his way over uh, to you. And he's standing in the middle of all of this fire and it's just licking at the stone flesh uh, and it doesn't seem to be doing much to him. So he seems to be all right. Uh, but he stands there uh, at the edge of the bridge leading over towards the rock that you and Larry are standing on. Uh, and he is awaiting your orders. Uh, and actually, at this point, it does come back around pretty much to you. Uh, Clag, I guess, would go. Uh, and seeing that uh, this basilisk creature uh, is attacking Jace, uh, I think he is going to release some of the energy that he was holding on to in the Basilisk's direction. And misses. <laughs> Got a 12. Uh, and it goes wide. Uh, Usharia, it comes back to you. Do I think that Gronk has any information about those missing villagers? Yeah, I don't know if you would have any way of really knowing that. I mean, you could maybe make a cosmic awareness kind of mm -hmm. attempt at something like that if you wanted to. Okay, I will. Ooh, 91. Add 10, that gets you up to 100 for sure. Uh, Gronk not smart. That was what <laughs> I was... That was the vibe I was getting. <laughs> okay. Um, so for, <laughs> for my move, I will just tell Gronk, maybe it's best if he steps off the bridge onto the tar pit. <laughs> Into the tar? <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Bloom. And then he just slowly starts to just sink. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Uh, Thalia. All right. I'm going to move closer. Um, oh, can I get over there? Like right there. Is that okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I'm going to shoot at the basilisk <clears throat> with with spark, why not? Everything else is on fire. All right. Sorry, my mouse is not happy tonight. Okay. Amazing karma. Damn. 
All right, with Thanks. The, with the spark and the tel telekinesis, yeah? Yes. Okay. And that does 70. Yes. All right, so you hit. It looks like it does some damage to him. And, uh, and it hits, but where there should be flame, it almost gets absorbed. You see it flame up on him, and then it goes... And it looks like it almost goes into his body. All right. That can't be good. I'm going to shoot another one without the spark. Actually, I, I lied. I'm going to do the exact same thing. Okay. Spark. Mm -hmm. Keep losing where I'm supposed to. Okay. Karma. Look. All right. So that is another hit. And you see the same thing basically happen. It hits, it flares up, and then it just gets sucked into his form again. Okay. And that was it for you, right? That's both of your yep. actions? Okay. Yep. Uh, Griffin. Uh, okay. So Gronk is sinking. Yep, yep. All right, cool. Terminator style. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, <it's... laughs> Um, so, but you know, if he ever comes back up, I feel like I got, I got, you, got him. you know, I got him, right? <laughs> um, well, uh, I feel like that basket is, is well under control. I think that this other crustacean <laughs> is kind of like well within reach. I don't know if that crustacean is still, uh, in a stunned state. Like, I don't know if it needs to wait until his turn comes up before he comes out of that. Right. Okay. Um, if that's the case, then I will probably try to do what Zipol did, but just, you know, more successfully. Just better. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I guess I will move over here. No, not there. Closer. <laughs> there we go. Um, and give, give it all just ha cha, ha -cha uh, you know, in with you. <laughs> all right, plus uh, plus three column shift, plus uh, three column shift. So be fighting plus three. So uh, you're, uh, you would probably be on the uh, unearthly column. Uh, unearthly, sure, I can roll on the unearthly karma. There you go. All right, so <laughs> kabloop, and he goes in. And I think you've got one more action, right? Uh, I do have one more action, but I don't see anybody. I mean, like I, I could, you know, maybe try and go back towards the basilisk, but uh, I think that everybody else probably has him well in hand. Um, I may just try to sneak off a little bit this way and kind of see what I can see. All right. Okay. As you go in that direction, I'm gonna have you make an intuition roll. Sure. Ugh. Um, as you're getting closer to that mist, you notice the medallion that's on your uh, cloak begin to glow just a little bit. That's strange. Uh, Jace. Okay, so this guy tried to grapple me, and I he missed me. I'm a, I have some wrestling moves and mm -hmm. some grappling stuff. Uh, so I think I'll try to grapple him. Mm -hmm. See what happens. Wrestle snake. And a wrestle. Um, I think I'm, I'm not 100% sure how to read this. I know I get, with my martial arts B, I get a plus 3 CS. Is that plus 3 CS to my incredible wrestling? Is that a plus 3 calm shifts? Uh, you get a Plus three CS to hit in a grappling attack. Mm -hmm. and that's that's what martial arts damage. be. So basically you would be using... You get a plus two column shift when making a grappling attack. Uh, which I think that probably puts you at incredible, right? Now I guess that would be... That would be amazing. And then to hit, what it means basically is once you get somebody in a grapple, 
then you get a plus three CS to your fighting for the grappling attack. Oh, okay. So, so that you can actually you just punch them while you've got them uh, grappled. Oh, okay. Does I UFC make, style. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. Mm -hmm. So, uh, amazing. I'll try to grapple him with amazing. He mm -hmm. he went right past me, so I'll try to come up behind and grapple him. Okay. To like a clinch or something. Um, Arma. <coughs> How much would it cost to make that yellow? Let's see. Um, amazing. To a yellow would be... Six, uh, sorry, 56. 56 points? Mm hmm. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, let's do that. Why not? So, yellow. And okay. then. What's that do? What? It does ideas? strength damage, uh, which your strength is remarkable, correct? Yeah. Okay. All right. So, you, you do at least have him grappled uh, at this point. Uh, it doesn't look like you've done any damage with the grapple itself. So can I? Because I get three attacks, right? So yep. mm -hmm. So two, it was one. Mm -hmm. Can I like, like, uh, what would happen if I slam him down then with that, like a mm -hmm. arch thing? Yep. Okay. So is that another uh, amazing then? Or... Yeah, that would be on the amazing column. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Sure. I'll do karma. All right. Okay. And, uh, I'll just keep it. I'll just keep it green, though. I don't want to spend. Keep it green. Good. Yeah. Well, actually, that may take you to a. Ooh, it's darn close. <laughs> actually, no, I think it does. It does. It takes you to a yellow with the ten. Oh, okay. Then, then I believe that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I slam down. So he moves past me. I clinch him, and then I arch into the ground, slam him to the ground. He gives you a plus. Three column shift, so that would be one, two, three. Ooh, that might just do it. Yep, yeah, it does. Gonna make an endurance roll for him. A forty-eight, so he's gonna be okay. I get one more attack. All right. I'll try to just choke him. Oh, well, he's out. Oh, he's out. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just whisper in his ear. No <laughs> cloak, man. <laughs> <laughs> all right cool and all i right. jump up and go i got him <laughs> <Woo -hoo! laughs> all right so what do you guys want to do now at this point because it looks like everybody else is pretty much down uh, i want to go get my feet Oh, you get your. <laughs> Can't you just call your feet over to you? I suppose I can do that. Yeah, I suppose, yeah it's like feet. <laughs> they they just. Tee, 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 tee. Come here. <laughs> I can't whistle or do the whistle. <laughs> there you go. Uh, I might make a reference about the fact that my like mid, like you know based off of where I'm standing right here as I'm you know near this mist that my medallion is kind of glowing a bit. Mm -hmm. But you know other, other than that, like I don't know, I'm staying staying right here. Uh, Larry takes a step off of the rock and kind of walks across that little metal bridge. Uh, and as he does, he's got little butterflies now that are just kind of flying off of him. Uh, and as they fly off of him, you see droplets of water then beginning to kind of drop from above and slowly starting to put these flames out uh, that are uh, on the lighting up the area of the uh, of the tar pits there and he's going to take a little bit more damage while he does that i'm just going to go and check on my dad and jace over here okay i'm going to join them dad's okay he's kind of putting out the fire <laughs> sorry dad it's like you singed you've singed another of my shirts <laughs> He does love his fancy shirts, doesn't he? Listen, next time when your dad is being grappled by a giant snake, maybe don't set the snake on fire. All right. Sorry, Dad. It was pretty cool, though, wasn't it? Yeah, it was pretty cool. <laughs> Jace is doing a little dance thing. Going, like, took down the snake man. Took down the snake man. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> 
Correct. Um, can I send Z pole into the cave? Mm -hmm, sure. Just have him fly into the cave and do some reconnaissance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so you send the pole uh, in there, uh, and you can kind of sense things through him as, as he goes. There's a series of tunnels, and as he goes in, you see the, that kind of bluish mist. As he goes in, the light, well, there's like a luminescence inside this cave uh, that kind of turns that bluish mist almost like purple looking. And there are a bunch of really interesting rock formations inside here, kind of tucked into the corners and crevices of the, of the cave. And there are these like crystal-like things that are just kind of glowing ever so slightly in this kind of luminescent purple kind of glow. Uh, and the mist, it seems like, is coming out of these formations. Um, I'm going to make a quick roll here. Okay. And the pole kind of comes around one of the corners in the cave. And he sees uh, a couple of figures uh, lit by this kind of luminescence in the cave. And I'm going to pull something up here for you so you can kind of see what it is that you see several male figures uh, in the cave that are dressed in this kind of white and black kind of sheer armor and their faces are actually kind of a bluish kind of color but they've got energy that's kind of crackling in, in a greenish hue around them um, and you just kind of come around the corner, he spots two of them, and then he kind of quickly kind of pulls back so that he is not seen. And these are strange looking individuals. That's, that's certainly n like nothing you've really ever seen before. Um, then I, I just kind of send out that, that sort of empathetic warning to the family. You know, that just kind of like caution sense. Um, and then just say that, you know, kind of announce that there are some some sort of being, at least two of some sort of being in the cave. Lopes, make a uh, intuition roll for me. Okay. You got a 53. Um you note the color of the uh those crystals that are on the inside and you kind of look over at, at griffin uh because he's kind of in your line of sight anyway and you see the glow coming from his uh pendant that's on his chest mm -hmm. it's almost identical uh to the glow of the crystals inside that cave okay and what um, remind me what, what his pendant, like what, how is it shaped or what is it, what's it look like it's beyond just the pillar? It's the lion. Oh, the lion's call thing. Sorry. No, right. Sorry. No, it's not the lion's call thing. No, oh. it, it was the one that you would have originally had just as a part, the, the thing that was given to the, you. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. that thing. Yeah. Oh. You've got two pendants. I forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> you got to blame. <laughs> but yeah, the, I mean, if you look at your uh, at, at the token, you know, of the character, it's the thing that basically holds your cloak uh, together there. Yep. So that's the family heirloom. And I, I think, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, I was going to ask, may I roll a cosmic awareness when I get that signal from Lopes? Sure. Mm -hmm. find out are should we run should we should we be asking them for help do they need our help what is the situation mm -hmm. yeah sure yeah you can make so a with, roll with karma um oh 98 
<laughs> with karma, that definitely takes you over over 100. Okay. So, with that in mind, uh, give me one second here. I need to uh, switch off of something here because I don't want anybody to see this. You immediately become aware of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, probably seven individuals inside that cave. Uh, and we're talking about seven individuals that are very similar to one another uh, within the cave structure. But deeper in that cave, there are more. And you you would hesitate to guess that there are probably about eight to ten that are unconscious. Uh, and then a series of more individuals within that range of the unconscious individuals. Um, the You get a sense of those crystals that are inside the cave. Mm-hmm. And you see them in this vision. And you see basically looking through the pendant that is on Griffin's chest. You see the crystals through that pendant. It's like your senses are going through that and into the cave. Wow. Trippy. <laughs> and... You get the feel that what you are seeking is inside this cave on many different levels, both for the town of Ganatas and there's something that is calling the family as a whole into this cave as well. And I think we'll leave that as our cliffhanger for next time. All right. This was fun. Cool. Good. Yeah, we're <clears throat> starting to kind of scratch some surface of some uh, some other goings on here, I believe. Uh, so thank you, guys. We ran a little bit over time uh, tonight. Appreciate you kind of sticking out there for the last few minutes. I was about ready to call it, but then Bushari uh, uh, had, to, had to do that, so... Uh, so now, now we have a good little prequel no, for maybe what's to come. So, uh, thank you guys. I appreciate you being with me here on the first time out here on Twitch. We'll kind of see how that goes. And uh, for those of you that were in the uh, in the chat room, I do apologize that I can't actually chat while I'm doing this, but I'm definitely focused on the game. But uh, those of you that were a part of it tonight, we really appreciate you guys coming out. It looks like we actually got a raid. That lasted about 15 seconds or so. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, uh, a little longer, but yeah, yeah. too long. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll go back and kind of check and see maybe where that came from and uh, uh, maybe send them a thank you or something like that. But thank you, everybody, for joining us tonight. And thanks to my players, as always. Love you guys. Thank you. All right. We'll see you all next guy. time around. Night, everybody. Bye. All right. Good night. Have a good night. Bye. Bye. Bye.